So thank you very much for the invitation to give this talk. I'd like to talk about why I think everyone should learn a little bit about machine learning and AI. And to avoid this, are they coming to get you mentality that seems to be in the press. So know something about A, not learn to produce them. Now, it's OK for some people to learn to produce them. But I don't think the general public needs to understand how they do what they do completely and in-depth knowledge. That's not what I'm talking about. But I do think they understand, they need to understand the issues. You don't need to understand how a car works to drive a car, but you do need to understand the laws, how to use it, what it can and can't do to be make use of it. So in the last few years, we've seen AI creep in lots of places. And one of the things I think people are still not getting is it's everywhere. And as we all know, and I think we need to understand that people need to understand that. And, we, and that's why I think people need to have an understanding. What, is, what kind of things are we talking about with machine learning, AI? And it's not this magical thing that only the brilliant people can have anything to do with or should know about. So we're seeing it in predictive maintenance. We're seeing it a lot with images. And this is from the World Economic Forum. They've forecasting where they think the money is going to be in US dollars over the next, well, between 2016 to 2025. And we can see it's around images. It's around that trading predictions this kind of stuff. The other reason I think people need to have some understanding of this is it is going to change jobs. Again, from the World Economic Forum, the growth and decline in jobs is it is changing. People's jobs are changing. What people do is changing. And I think some people are surprised about some of the changes. So software engineering jobs are increasing. Marketing specialists are increasing. Recruiters, these kind of things, user interface designs, account managers. But some of the jobs that are disappearing or there's less proportionally less of them happening is things like simple admin jobs, salespeople, and journalists. In fact, the journalists, I think, have been a bit surprised about how quick this has come up on, on them. So it's argued that the 10 lowest recruiting jobs can be classified as automatable. And I think it's especially interesting to think about journalists. A lot of the big press organizations are now using robo journalists. And we know the that Microsoft are using, have got rid of some of their journalists and are now or not recruiting. And they're replacing them with some automatic systems to do this. Because a lot of it's about getting little bits of information. I think there will be jobs for journalists. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of the journalist jobs have been cut and pasting bits from elsewhere because of high time pressures to get a publication out. Again, World Economic Forum. jobs where AI is creeping into. So it's no surprise that it's software and IT services. But the second biggest one is education. And the learning analytics and processing data to do this, trying to find good routes through 
information for students, all of these kind of things, and analysing uh, predictions of who to take on grades, that kind of stuff. I quite like this graph, and I, it's about that risk of replacement, and it came from Lean Sheehan from the Hoover Institute. And they were looking at what the economic implications, where the job losses are likely to be from AI. And they had this human veneer, safe zone, danger zone and slow creep. So kind of what they found, what they're suggesting is the more social side are at less risk. So social workers, psychologists, PR, criminal defense attorneys. That's an interesting one um, because also on this list is legal financial analysts. The reason people are commonly saying defense attorneys, remember this is an American uh, image, is a lot of what they do is bluff when they're in court, they are, it's that side that the people are less convinced that the robots, in inverted commas, because people use this phrase robots when they mean artificial intelligence or machine learning. It's in that courtroom environment that they believe there's less risk. But the slow creep bit, and I would probably move it a little bit towards the danger zone, if it's just information gathering on its own, that's likely to be riskier. Which is why we see in the danger zones, personal tax preparer, uh, insurance adjuster, those are rule followers jobs, if you like. You follow the rules, you do this. Telemarketing, we're seeing that chatbots are creeping into that. So. I think we've seen a pattern here that it's around that social side that people believe is a little bit safer, but it's not 100% safe. So is this the future? You know, being told to get away from, and the robots doing this. Is this the future? Terminator coming along, taking all the jobs, we're subservient to it. I don't think so. So looking at a couple of headlines, 80 million global workers will be replaced by robot automation. So this is from the McKinsey report that uh, was sent out by the BBC. 14% of the global workforce will need to transition to new occupation categories. Yeah, they're transitioning to new jobs potentially. So a lot of this depends on societal changes. And there's a lot of scaremongering here, you know, taking 80 million, 800 million jobs by 2030. Well, let's think about that a little bit more. The World Economic Forum is suggesting 75 million jobs globally by 20, 2014, but 133 million new ones created in, in place of them. So more on the analysis, more on the social de uh, software developers, social media, the new jobs, the new roles that are coming along. The slightly controversial one based on the last, the previous slides, uh, customer service workers, that one I'm not so sure about. Uh, but there, the suggestion has been that it will create more jobs and productivity could be increased by better algorithms. And we'll come back to that topic a little bit later. But the real answer is nobody knows. None of this is certain. None of this is set in stone at the moment. Lots, it's all guesses, you know, you can make some sensible predictions, but nobody knows what is going to happen. One prediction I, I think I would like to make, though, is machine learning AI is not going to go away. 
the genie is out the bottle, if you like. It's there. It's what we need. It's in place now. People are using it. My own personal journey through all this stuff is I've worked on non using AI to create non-invasive glucose monitors and selection of neurophysiological signals and detection of fraudulent counting or a simple neural model. This is my first main project, uh, modeling an insect's eye and for a movement detection, leather classification. And I'm saying currently, but it's, it's coming to an end. Deep learning in detecting facial emotions in people with Asperger syndrome. And this is this, this is the one. Uh, effective computational modeling to extract natural effect, effective states of students with Asperger syndrome in computer-based learning environments. And this was done with Dr. Amina Darwood. She was a PhD student with me and now she's uh, working in Iraq. Uh, and, she, and this is most this is mostly her work or pretty much all of it is her work it's her PhD um, she was looking at detection using deep learning algorithms to detect uh, facial recognitions for, for and other characteristics via a webcam to detect if people are bored not bored, and she had a mixture of both people with and without Asperger syndrome, and has some great results. Let's just skip through that one. I think things like TensorFlow are making a dramatic change. It is a lot easier now to get into this stuff. TensorFlow is making it easy through the collabs and collab and through uh, Google's uh, seed repository to have a go at doing something, try it out, have a go, have a play with these ideas. Computing, computational thinking is on the rise. Uh, in the UK, the Computational thinking is embedded into the school curriculum, or it's supposed to be. Uh, in Janet Wing's, Jeanette Wing, sorry, paper in 2014, the one that, one of the big ones in this, uh, she was talking about computational thinking as not being about how we replicate computers thinking, it's about how we computer scientists think and what the valuable insights that we have, the skill set that we have around problem solving, around ideas rather than just building something. And that's, that's the models, those kind of ideas are creeping in all over the place and that we have something to offer. And I think that's the same with AI understanding what it is to a certain extent and not having the big fear, I think would be beneficial to society. And I think having that skill set, not necessarily building the AI, but understanding what the issues are around uh, bias, unconscious bias, bias in data sets, understanding that is a great skill to understand to, to make you a efficient part of society. Okay, so my personal view is we can have what I'm calling benevolent machine learning. So benevolent machine learning is a phrase I've adapted from, from Tegmart's book, it's a description of benevolent AI. I think it applies to machine learning. A good outcome is not guaranteed, but it's something that needs to be ensured by hard work in form of in form of AI safety research. I think we can take that further. I think we should be saying that if people have a better understanding of what these things are and feel a little bit more comfortable about what they are, we can make sure we can try and be very mindful of what's going on and how 
these could be misused and what we should do about protecting people from them. That's not saying I think they're evil. In fact, I think the opposite. I'm a firm believer in this idea of collaborative intelligence. Harvard Business Review had an article on that. And that's really about, it's not human versus AI. I think that's where people keep trying to place people. It's the machines that's going to be taking our jobs. Mm, yes, but they might give us new jobs. They might lead us to have new jobs. There's a whole range of issues around how how far do we want AI to go, but I think we've we're already seeing it. We've got AI assistants that interact and embodying what we want. Amplifying. This is an important one, I feel. Perhaps we should be thinking about these things and concentrating on the what they can do in the background for the jobs we don't want to do, so we can get on with the things that we do want to do or the more creative side. I know there's some worries about AI taking over artist jobs and things like that. But let's be mindful. Let's keep our our ethical head on, if you like, and making sure that what we do doesn't harm people, that people but people are aware of it. They need to be part of that discussion and being part of that discussion and I mean by people, I mean people outside of computing as well. They need to understand what this thing means, what they are, not just what they what people see in the press and what they see in uh, films. We are going to be asked to do things differently. That's nothing new. We're going to do new things and different things. I firmly believe we are. We're going to have to do things differently. We're going to be applying, learning new techniques, new updates. That sounds, makes us sound like a machine. But I think we have to bear in mind that it's not going to, things are going to change, but that doesn't mean that we're replaced. I think some jobs will disappear. I think some jobs will be created, but that's always happening. So there's some really nice resources out there. And the first one does a nice introduction to what deep learning is. But one of the ones I really like as well for all this more social aspect is a site called AI in Schools, which provides materials for schools to use to teach AI, but not, you know, they don't, you know, it's not teaching you to write loads and loads of different um, forms of AI. It's about understanding it and playing with them and getting the sense of what they do. So my conclusions, we need to take a balanced view. I think it would be silly to say, oh, AI is never going to be a problem. It is. Or machine learning is never going to be a problem. They can be, but they also can be helpful. Lots of evidence suggests that human in the loop, which is this collaborative idea of putting people and machines together in terms of things like cancer detection, having lots of it being processed by the machine and then the expert looking at a few of them, actually produces high success rates. The price to get involved in this is dropping dramatically. We don't have to have lots of really expensive equipment and you know, very, very, very high skilled people to start using. We do need them to develop it further, but if we start using to apply them, no, the price has dropped. I think I believe machine learning has a lot to offer, but I believe society needs to understand what machine learning is and what it's not as well. I do believe in this idea of the human and AI as a collaboration. And, but I don't think anybody who works with machine learning doesn't realize that human factors are important with machine learning, the biases, these kind of things. 
they need to be emphasized to people they need to be emphasized to computing students that they we need to factor those in thank you very much <laughs>